Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Turf Equipment Maintenance Facility here at the Atlanta Athletic Club. Today I'm talking about setting up cutting units on the surface plate and paralleling the rollers to that cut line. Uh, the cut line formed between the top face of the bed knife and the, uh, the surface of the reel. Uh, now, whenever you're dealing with, uh, with, with paralleling a, a cutting unit, you want to have that reel ground to a true cylinder and then the, the bed knife adjusted uh, very close to the surface of the reel. Now, we use a 1,000th feeler gauge when we're setting up uh, our cutting units and uh, and we're always taking our 7-inch cutting units across the surface plate. Now our 5-inch cutting units uh, have a fixed reel, of course, and a movable knife. So we're able to uh, parallel those in the peerless grinder uh, as part of the grinding setup. We uh, adjust the front roller to be parallel to the, to the center line of the reel as part of our grinding setup and then parallel the rear roller uh, after that uh, procedure is done. I've covered that in a, in a previous video. But uh, with a 7-inch diameter uh, reel, more than likely you've got a, uh, well, especially on the, the John Deere QA7s, have a movable reel. Uh, that reel could be anywhere. And we do move it um, a lot of times when we're setting up to grind, we'll find that it's a little bit out. Uh, so we'll just, rather than go through contortions and moving the, the, the roller up there, we know we've got to, to do the finishing process on the surface plate anyway. We'll just move the reel uh, because we know that our, our grinder is straight. So, so anytime you're, you're, you're paralleling on the, on the surface plate, you're going to want to set the reel on top of a standard. Um, here we're using uh, two different standards depending on the, the uh, usage of the, of the reel itself. Uh, we've got a quarter inch standard and, and by standard I mean this is a, a piece of ground uh, tool steel. I, I sourced these from Granger, um, but it's, it's a quarter inch by one inch uh, ground tool steel. And then for our uh, QA7s, we're, of course, using those at a higher height to cut. I have a half inch by one and a half bar uh, that, again, is, is the ground tool steel. And I use that as, as my reference plane when I'm, uh, when I'm setting up uh, to parallel. And uh, we set the reel down on top of this standard after it's been ground to a true cylinder. And we know that that's going to be the basis of our cut line. We have our reel adjusted to, uh, to our bed knife, again within one thousandths end to end, and then we bring the knife up uh, just to touch that, that uh, bar, and then from then on we can, we can start measuring our, our rollers. So I'll set up a reel and uh, reset, and we'll take a look at, at that process. So here we have one of our John Deere QA7 cutting units up on the surface plate. A couple things about mounting a cutting unit on the surface plate. Clean your rollers, inspect your rollers for run out, bad bearings, so on and so forth. Clean the surface, um, any grit or anything like that, especially with greens height cutting units, you want to make sure that you don't have it, you're not introducing any error into your measurements. Um, so once you get the cutting unit mounted up, uh, you're actually going to roll the cutting unit up onto the, uh, the gauge bar so that the, the reel itself is sitting up on top of the gauge bar and the bed knife is up against the rear uh, face uh, of that gauge bar. That lets you know that the, 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 the cutting unit, the, the, the reel is, is parallel. Um, to that gauge bar and, and in that way we're measuring off of the, that ground surface of the, of the reel and uh, that's what's forming that cut line 
after we bring it down to match the top surface of the of the bed knife. After we get the cutting unit setting up here, then we can take our feeler gauge. In this case, I've got a one thousandth uh, feeler gauge, and you can put it in on each end of the uh, front roller and see if you can pass it underneath uh, that that roller. Um, if you if you uh, have a lot of clearance under one end or the other, then you can adjust your eccentrics. Um, generally speaking, I'd leave my leading end eccentric uh, in the, the horizontal position, and I always adjust off of my trailing side eccentric on the QA7s. Um, then once I get the front roller locked down to where it's parallel, and I don't have any gap uh, end to end on that, then you can actually come around and simply push down on the rear roller rock it back so that the rear roller is sitting down flush on the uh, surface and go through the same procedure end to end on the rear roller. Now uh, the alternative to that uh, method is to use a dial indicator uh, base on the on the surface of the uh, surface plate and measure down to the top of the rear roller on either end um, and uh, just just check for for a difference there. Um, that method is also good for checking roller run out. Um, on the uh, on my fairway uh, cutting units, I, I like to see um, ten thousandths or less of run out in my rollers. And uh, of course, on my greens uh, greens cutting unit rollers, I like to see. Oh, two to five thousandths max on on those. Now, while we're here looking at this, um, I wanted to point out uh, behind center distance when it, when we're talking about uh, cutting unit geometry. Uh, I use this gauge block. I've got the uh, the knife is still pushed up against the back side of this bar, and uh, if I push this gauge block up against the bar as well, that gives us a good visual indication of just how far behind center that uh, front face of that bed knife is. And if I'm looking at this right, that's at least a quarter of an inch um, behind, closer to really three-eighths of an inch behind center line of the, of the reel to the front face of that knife. And in a cutting unit that's cutting this high of a height of cut, that isn't uh, too bad really, um, but that would be totally unacceptable for a greens level cutting unit. Um, when people are talking about the, uh, the aggressiveness of a cutting unit and uh, um, bed knife attitude, I, what they're really referring to, I believe, is, is uh, behind center distance. Um, if you, if you angle your, your bed knife up and give it more attitude, because we're on a fixed mounting point on the knife, you wind up bringing that clip point back further behind center line with uh, more bed knife attitude. So your behind center distance increases. And uh, so when, when that behind center distance gets too great that the sweep of the reel blade is coming down much below your height of cut and then on its way back up is where it's actually making the, the, uh, the, the clip on the, reel bl on the uh, blade of grass. So um, at the lower heights of cut you get that the sweep of the reel blade down too far into the canopy of the turf and that causes clip marks, it causes uh, uh, scalping, and uh, so that's what they're referring to when you're talking about an extended knife. That knife would reach further forward towards the center line of the uh, reel and take away some of that aggressiveness. It effectively flatten out your bed knife attitude. So that's about it for this uh, presentation today. Uh, appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching.